All right, so what is mechanics anyway? So you guys are in a mechanics course, you should totally know this. In my opinion, my, my concept of mechanics is geometry and motion. It's all about motion, and that is what makes it awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start out pretty basic, and the reason why I'm starting out basic is because I've taught middle scores and high scores stuff like this, and, and so I'm going to start with Newton's first law. Um, Newton's wear first law is not wear a helmet, that's, that's important too. <laughs> I think I think so it's the first that, well. time I see someone like explaining Newton's first law while putting on a thing, a Hamlet. Like it looks looks funny. Okay, keep talking, sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the way I like to describe Newton's first law in terms of unicycling is that technically by Newton's first law, because you, you should just be able to keep on keep on riding pretty simply. So um, if I if I if I show you guys how to actually get on a unicycle for the first time. You, you have two pedals, you have a dominant foot, a non-dominant foot. The pedal, for, in my case, my dominant foot is my right foot, so that pedal can be out higher. I can go and use a wall if I want to, and I can get on top of a unicycle. And then, as Newton's first law says, if I start going, I would just keep on going, kind of magically, assuming the net force is zero at all times. You guys ready? Okay, so this is, this is simple, simple unicycling, and once I'm done, I dismount. Dismounting is very important because Chances are I will fall from time to time, and I do not fall, I dismount. And I graciously catch the seat to avoid this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So Newton's first law essentially says that I should totally be able to just keep on unicycling as could all of you. Which would be really ideal, but why doesn't that happen? Because forces are not. There's friction, okay. And like, it's like a non-stable equilibrium if you're just standing up. It, it, it's, it's unstable equilibrium, true, very true, but what is, what is more important, also important here? The net force is at zero. When I, when, when I normally ride a unicycle, um, and, and let's say I begin to fall, is my net force zero? No. No, no, there's gravity. Good, good. So we have gravity. Gravity is a force. It causes unstable equilibrium. <laughs> Welcome to reality. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have, to, I have to scores. I have to tell. Okay, what is the force that causes me to go towards the ground? And like, they have to have this realization. Oh my goodness, gravity exists. Okay. So on that note, um, I will always be wearing a helmet today. And I encourage you, if you ever try anything like this, which you totally can. And what's probably is, maybe we'll let you try this. Maybe not. <laughs> but you should totally be wearing a helmet. Probably you should try it. Yeah, probably. Probably you should try it. I'll let you try a couple, a couple, of, a couple. Of I do things. want to try this. <laughs> okay. Um, thank goodness we have carpet, right? Okay. Uh, helmets are very important. We can talk about why that is. So then we have Newton's second law, which says that net force can cause an acceleration. And and so this is pretty basic. You guys should know what Newton's second law is. But let's let's do some analysis. Okay. Cool. See you, Bella. Have a good day. Bye, Bella. Okay. Bye. So let's draw a force, a uh, free body diagram. Um, anybody want to volunteer? What? Come on, volunteer to draw a free body diagram of a unicyclist. I would, but I'm recording. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to? Felix. Felix, okay, cool. So, here's some colored chalk. Draw a really happy unicycler. And, and, and go draw a forced uh, free body diagram. Oh, yeah. Felix, use the purple chalk. Okay. Yeah. Felix is going to be using the purple chalk. Oh yeah. Okay, can you guys see that? No. <laughs> purple is not a visible color. You, Wait, you gotta... That's, okay, that's... No, 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 no. This, oh, okay. is, this is a guideline. This is not... Oh, okay, okay, okay. You, you, can, you can draw um, the forces in a different color besides purple. Um, if you, if you so choose. Um, um, is that your, like, original art? That is my original artwork, yes. Um, this was done my freshman year while here um, when I decided to do this presentation um, for Splash. It looks like. Nice. Yes, I, I did try very hard to make it pretty. Um. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm smiling, that's good. Okay, so let's help Felix. What is one force on me? We already talked about one. Gravity, okay, so we got a gravity from the center of my mouse. Uh, Felix, that hurts. <laughs> Normal All right. force. Okay, so we got gravity. Good, good. What's normal another one? Force. Normal force. Normal force. Okay, Felix, draw a normal force. Well, technically it's there. Okay, draw it, draw it, draw it wherever it is. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're drawing a normal force this way. Yeah. Which way is the normal force? Perpendicular to the seat. 
Well, it's perfect. Well, 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 it's it's okay, hold up, hold up. What is our system here? What is our system? The whole thing. Okay, let's treat our system as all of me. Not not just me sitting on the seat, but the unicycle and me. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Now, now that's a good point. When, when, when almost all my, my considerations here, I'm going to say the unicycle is attached to me because I physically control this unicycle. I don't, I don't, like, like that, that's, that's part of, like, in order to balance, I have to do that. So, all right, okay. So now we've got gravity. You can't show the normal force here. Right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I, I wrote that someone else okay. brought the force Felix. out. Okay. And, and is there any other forces? We got a normal force, gravity. Friction. We got friction. Which way is friction? It's inside of the log board. No, no. Well, I mean, it depends on. Which way you're rolling, I guess. Okay. Yeah, in the direction of motion. Okay. So right now I'm slightly tilted this way. Which way is friction probably going to be going? Opposing your motion. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Okay. Cool. So so. Great job, Felix. Everybody got some Felix. So what we have, we have a gravitational you force, you we have a normal force, and we have a force of friction. Okay, guys, guys, wait up. Is it, what is the net force? Is it zero? Nope. They're falling. They're falling. Okay, okay, okay. so, so there's, 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 a good chance that in that case, I'm maybe falling. Okay. Now the ideal thing is. Um, you could actually, you could be a little bit more technical and say, about this point, I also have a torque about my body. And that torque is causing me to rotate inward. Um, so and and so there's very little torque if I am perfectly upright. And so technically, I am in equilibrium if I am perfectly upright. Um, and that would be great. But if I start leaning, it gets harder and harder to stay up because there's this giant torque trying to pull me over. And I'll try to do a trick that um, I'm not too good at. Um, but it's but it's but it's interesting. It's called a stall, and it's when I'm essentially just not moving as much as I can be, just staying up for a little bit. I'm not very good at it, but but what that is is if I'm if I am like almost perfectly upright, I don't instantly fall over. It's not it, the, so essentially as soon as you start to tip over, you're kind of in uh, deep trouble. Does it help when you don't breathe? No, that does not help. That does not help. You need to be dying. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you some questions about friction. Friction is very, very important to unicycling. It's very, very important to unicycling and all kinds of balance. Okay. Let's identify both an example of kinetic friction and static friction. Okay. Give me one example of static friction. The force is causing you to go on a unicycle. Good. An example would be between the ground and the wheel. Even though the wheel is moving, it's rotating over the surface, there's it's static not, friction here. It's not slipping. It's not slipping. Okay, good. What is the example of kinetic friction? You sliding on your saddle. The sliding on my saddle, okay. Between the wheel and the axle, good. Okay, so just to make sure you guys know, between this wheel and the ground, this is static friction. Now this is interesting though, because technically, it's not perfect static friction. An example of this would be if I try to do do this motion. So if I'm upright and I start twisting, oh my God. this right here. He's such a boss. That was kinetic friction. That was my wheel sliding with respect to the ground. Now let's draw let's draw a little bit of area. So if we have our wheel and we have a top-down view, okay, there's this little chunk of the wheel. That actually touches the ground, right? Like you, like if the wheel is here and it's compressing the wheel, there's a certain amount um. of of area over which this wheel touches the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, when I try to turn, which do you think would be easier if my wheels were pumped up really, really high, or if they were if they were kind of flat? Really if they were really high, because that reduces the amount. Reduces surface area. Yeah, so, more time. Exactly. So my wheels are very much pumped up. What, and what happens is this what? area what? shrinks, and there's less torque here due to the friction, and that makes it easier for me to turn. What does pumped up mean? Pumped up means um, there's a little valve stem here, and I pump, pump a lot of air into here. It would be quote, oh. quote, flat okay. if, I, if this could really compress very, very easily. This is important because as a unicyclist, um, there's always this issue that if my wheel is flat, it's very, very hard for me to make that, that, that any, any kind of turn. So the fact that I can do this pretty easily, this says that my wheels are very, very much pumped up. 
So if you're riding a bike, it's hard to turn. It's probably the fact that your wheels are flat. That would be one of the main reasons why. Very important to unicycle. Okay, cool. We talked about that. Um, I also have my scooter. I love scooters. Um, I am like officially like about to break this one. Um, I had a, I had a scooter as a kid. Did not do skateboarding too much, but I did scootering. I, I like literally skateboards. what? I, really didn't like I did like skateboards, but I was better at scootering. Okay. <laughs> so it's... I literally like I, I literally did work so much on my scooter that I literally broke the metal right into two pieces, and so I sort of have like the the, the handles like the, the, this whole shaft and like the rest of my scooter. So this is, this is gonna go probably pretty soon. Hmm. But what I wanted to say was that normally I have kids think about, okay, where are the sources of friction? So there, when, I, when I brake, I'm, apply, I'm hitting this brake pedal. So where's static friction again? Uh, between the wheels and the ground. Between the wheels and the ground, and kinetic friction is? Between the and the wheels. Okay, you're good. You guys, you guys beat the middle score. <laughs> Okay. Right. We better, right? right? So, so let's let's do some um, conceptual thinking. Let's see. Use a scooter. <laughs> what is the best way for all these people to move this rock? Only what you know of static and kinetic friction. Pull oh, upward. Pull oh, upward. Okay. Okay. No, Mathematically, kidding. you can show that that doesn't always help, and sometimes it does. Okay. Rolling the the whatever Grease thing. Grease the sand. Grease the sand. So you're saying like rolling the rock? Yeah. Let's okay, cool. That would that would help. That would help. The right friction, so you want to minimize friction. You want to minimize friction. Let's say you can only pull like horizontally. This is not totally unicycling, like, this is more about friction, but I want you to think about this. Yes. Like like if you have a set of like uh, poles or dowels, you put a row of them and yeah. you roll the block the rock along them. Yep, yep. If you had something go underneath it, it would it would it would significantly decrease the amount of force required to get the rock to move. What do you know about the relative strength between static friction and kinetic friction? Kinetic friction is very much less than static friction. Yeah. So if you're trying to move this rock using what you just said, what should you do? Go fast. You should get it moving, exactly. As soon as you get this rock moving, it's going to be very easy to keep moving. So that means that on a unicycle, um, as, as soon as I start spinning or, or, or rotating my wheel, I lose a lot of traction. And this gets kind of scary because sometimes I'm on wax floors. Um, sometimes I unicycle in gymnasium, and it's, it's pretty, why? It's so much fun to spin around, <laughs> so much fun. But it's important to think about because as soon as I lose that static friction, um, I, I'm in for some spinning, and this is on carpet, so it doesn't, it doesn't work quite as well, um, but a century, if I'm lucky, Whoa. I, 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 have a, I have a lot of friction here with this carpet. Jonathan, um, are you going to do it on the scooter? Do it on the scooter? Okay. Do it on the scooter too. She saw me doing random stuff on a scooter when I was stressed out a couple of days ago. So, on a scooter. <laughs> if, I, if I don't hurt myself in the process. Um, That's a Yay! Okay. Alright, and that, that directly applies to conservation angle momentum. Um, should you be interested in that physics concept? Okay. Perfect. What, what was your name again? Uh, Jay. Jay. Everybody say hi to Jay if you haven't seen Jay. Hi Jay. Is, <laughs> Jay is somebody's pre -frosh. So, you got that right? Okay. He has a name. He's not somebody's pre -frosh. Poor guy. I don't remember if he's pre -frosh. Troy. Troy. Okay. Hi, Troy. Okay. Cool. So, what, what's the best way? Hi, Troy. I'm sorry, Troy. Okay. Very quickly, another example of friction. How do you get a car to stop when you're on ice? Get the wheels spinning so they don't slip as well on this one. Yeah, so you pump the brakes. Pumping the brakes helps you to um, increase the amount of static friction you have. Have a happy turkey Thanksgiving, etc. Uh, cool. we're right. losing so, so here's the fundamental thing that you should take away from this uh, before you leave. Or not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two methods of balance. This is what I'm, I'd like you to really take home today. Don't take that personally. He has to be somewhere. He always lives at that time. It's, it's, it's perfectly good. It's perfectly good. Okay. There's two main ways in which people balance. And these fundamentals of balance don't just apply to unicycling. You see somebody right on a tightrope. You see somebody on what's called a rollabola, which I'll show you in a bit. And these two main processes are counter steering and sort of twisting your body. Okay? Counter steering deals with changing your point of contact with the ground. If, if you're falling over too much this way, you can move your point of contact to stay upright so you're closer to the unstable equilibrium 
that you want to be at. Um, in terms of twisting your body, this would be like using your arms to help correct yourself to keep you from falling over. And so it's very hard on a unicycle um, to ride without hands. I'll show you that when we get to it. Um, but the, te the thing is, that I want you to know, is that you use both techniques. It's sort of a continuum between both things. So no matter what you're doing in terms of balance, you're using both of these techniques to help you to balance. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit more into deep detail with this. Counter steering. Counter steering again, you're shifting your point of contact uh, with the ground in the opposite direction to help you move. Um, so, so for example, if I want to go this way, which way should I move my, my, my point of contact in order to move in this direction? I should move in the opposite direction. So if I, if I, if I put my point of contact over here, I'm going to start falling this way. If I want to go this way, I move my point of contact in the opposite direction, and then I'll start falling this way, or accelerating this way depending on how you look at it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so we have an example on the, on the unicycle. This is called idling. Anybody have ever heard of idling? I have. You have heard of idling. Okay, what is idling then? Getting on a unicycle without any support from any other stuff. Okay, um, that's that's like a free map, but okay, close. What else? Okay, Staying still. So idling is a process. It's also called a rocker, and it, it's so the camera can see it. Uh, I can, can do it on the table. Uh, it's going back. Oh, oh, for the camera, I see. I'll no, I won't be. I won't actually be doing this. I'd, I'd have. Okay, issues hold on. Let's let's see. You, you like, couldn't you? I, I I maybe could, but I I don't really. I have more to show you. If I got hurt now, I couldn't do it. Anymore. Okay. Um. It, it's a process of going back and forth and constantly moving this point of contact back and forth to stay upright. And it's very, very popular among unicyclists because it allows you to do stuff and stay in the same place uh, virtually. So this is I like me going back and forth. And, and so what's happening is when I'm too far forward, I put out a little more forward, then I'm going backwards, and then I'm, I'm leaning forward, so I put out forwards. And I'm constantly overcompensating and going back and forth in order to, in order to stay upright. So if I really wanted to be cool, I could do this one-footed, and you'd be like, oh, that's so cool, because it doesn't look any harder, but it really is a lot harder to learn. And, <laughs> and so, I mean, that's really not impressive, from this, um, like, from the, from the perspective of somebody doing this for, like, a performance, like, nobody would give you any money, um, so... <laughs> Are you going to so, try to get money from us now, <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to pay me, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> So, so it'd be much, much more cool if I did this while juggling. <laughs> oh, yes. Hold on, hold on. I want to get a good picture of this. And then maybe, maybe you would actually pay me. I don't know. So, so what happens is I'm idling. And if I do this right, I stay virtually almost in the same place. And that lets me work on juggling and other cool stuff like that. Oh, my <laughs> God. So that is idling. All I'm doing, I'm moving my point of contact. And I really have to move this out further than I do with my center of mass. In fact, I want my center of mass to move very slightly, if any, so that way I can focus on other stuff. Got it? Cool. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, physics with idling. You can, you can draw a free body diagram from this perspective. You notice that when I'm leaning back, the force of friction is pushing me back. And so I'm, I'm doing this rocking <laughs> motion back and forth. You're not doing any work. <laughs> what, what's pogo? I don't get it. Pogo, pogo stick. Good question. Sorry. A pogo stick. They have a giant spring on them, and and like two two little places where you pedal and you bounce up and down. Do they actually exist? Yeah. Has anybody ever? How many people have done a pogo stick? Uh, never even seen one. Yeah. Unsuccessfully. Okay. They're not okay. that hard. I've never even seen one. I'm, I'm amazed. I think I think the middle schoolers got you beat for once. Um. So pogo sticks. <laughs> Um, they're very, very similar, um, and it's the idea that, I don't know if I have anything more on the side. Oh, I do. So I'm actually going to show you this pogo stick guy. This is my, my little, this, I did draw him. Um, and, and what he's going to do is he's going to jump this way, okay? And so let's think about how he's going. So right now he's up in the air, this is where ground is. Um, what should he do if he wants to go this way? Lean that way. He, should, he, he could lean, but more importantly, he should just move this point of contact, right? Okay. So he's going to move this point of contact. So now he's, now he's got, his, got his center of mass in a different position than where this is. When he goes to land, he's going to fly off in a different direction. He's going to go up in the air. He's going to be going this way in the air. And then he's going to stop himself by moving this point of contact even farther out from his center of mass. And then he's going he's gonna to be back as he wanted to be. So if we, if we broke this down, 
He moved where his point of contact was, he hit the ground, he moved over, he stopped himself, and he was, he was back. Hold on. Happy and he this thing, this thing is the thing that jumps? Yeah. Yeah, let, let me, let me, let me demonstrate this very quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't have a pogo po po thing, but I do have a unicycle. And, yeah. and, and so there's so, a trick on, on unicycling called bunny hops. And what it consists of, is it consists of something like this. If, if you consider it more impressive, I can do it that way. And so what oh I'm doing God. is I have to, oh my goodness, I don't want to hit the lights. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to move my point of contact. This is a very inefficient pogo stick, by the way. Um, <laughs> very inefficient. It takes a lot of work. And, and so I'm doing my point of contact. So let me, let me, let me just recap what this is. Let's, oh say, let's say I want to go this way. Which way do I have to move my point of contact? Other way. Yeah, other, way. other way. You ready? I'm going to try this. Move other way. Now I'm going. Stop myself. Oh my god. Ready to go that way? Point of contact. Stop myself. Nice. Jonathan, you're so insane. Okay, okay. This was my entertainment as a kid. Though I just love physics and this is why. So, let me do, let me do a more interesting way. After I catch my breath. So what I'm going to have to do, it might, it might get me into trouble, I might mess up. If I do mess up, hopefully I won't be injured. If I am injured, be careful. at least you're a med like. 617-653-1212. Great, great. Or 100 from any campus phone. Um, I am going to try to do bunny hops, but I'm going to try to do it, once I catch my breath, to while standing on the wheel. It's a little, it's a little harder. It's the same concept. Um, Hold on, I'm gonna move that way. <laughs> but but it but it, it, it is pretty exciting. Um, Can you move the table so you don't put your head on the corner? No, I'm actually more concerned about this metal pipe. <laughs> um, from underneath it. But, but it. But it's okay. Um, it is very important when you do this um, to to make sure that the seat is actually secure. Uh, <laughs> have you had experience with this going on? Um, I haven't completely, but I, I have had times in which the seat was slightly loose. It gets really scary when the like the seat starts to turn. <laughs> so, okay. Oh my god! Okay. Okay. You guys ready? You guys ready? Oh my god! All right, all right. What are you doing? Well, here, here I go. Jonathan. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to actually have a conversation and tell you what I'm trying to do as I do this. You're going to hit the pipe. You think I'm gonna hit the pipe? Yes. Yes. Uh, here. Okay. All right. All right. Hopefully, yes. I want to integrate. If I do, I, I apologize in advance. <laughs> okay. And I can't see a thing uh, due to this, um, which would actually be worse. Um, that would be doing it blindfolded, essentially. Uh, <laughs> okay, be, Jonathan, be careful because there's a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys ready? I, I should be okay. I should be okay, hopefully. You guys ready? Yeah. Hopefully this works on the first or second try. All right, ready? Set. Here we go. So this oh my is God, funny happy. Now, if I want to go that way, which way do I have to move my funny contact? I'm no way. Uh, I'm a situation. Now I'm going. Now I'm stop myself. Now if I want to go back, what do I need to do? Other direction. Other direction. Now I'm going back. And if I really want to, I can start spinning around. Careful! Like that. Woo! 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 So, all that was was the boss. same thing as what you would normally do on a pogo stick. Just a little bit more intense. <laughs> a little bit more work than a pogo stick. Uh, but, but it's all good. Okay. I think you actually wound up being exactly where you left so no it's not working on. <laughs> Rollabola. How many have heard of a rollabola? I've never heard of it, but my dad made me one when I was little. You've heard of rollabola. Have you ever been on one? Uh, sort of. Sort of. Okay, cool, cool. So rollabolas, they're much less intense than unicycles at times. What they are, you have a cylinder, you have a rod. Well, not rod, sorry. Beam. Board. Whatever it is. And so what happens is, you very simply have your board, you place it on your cylinder, Ooh, that's actually pretty well balanced. And then, and then you hop on top and you try to bounce. And what happens is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the next slide so you can see it while I'm trying to do this. You have to move this board back and forth and sort of angle it so you can move this point of contact underneath you. Same old concept. All I'm doing is like counter steering. I'm moving this point of contact to keep myself upright. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. You guys ready? You sure? I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump up on this. You guys ready? Are you serious? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, Jonathan! All right, all right. Did you break it before? <laughs> no, but it sounded like it was breaking, so I was <laughs> slightly concerned. But no, no, it, it's really—it's right. not too bad. In fact, many of you could do this. 
Um, if you ever want to learn more about <laughs> surfing, <laughs> I didn't do that. If you ever want to do a surfing, this is a great way to get better at surfing. I haven't done surfing. Um, if you like riding horses, I've seen this at rodeos because it gets people accustomed to things moving underneath their feet um, while they try to bounce. Um, so that's that. And if I wanted to, to make this more interesting, I could throw oh, yes. dragon balls. <laughs> yes. And, uh, You're really trying to get money out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, and this is called the Boston. For those of you who are interested, this is called Mills Mess. Uh, this is called, I don't know what it's called. All right. Oh so, my gosh. So that was, that was a roll of law. All I'm doing, moving my point of contact. Um, and maybe, maybe later we can have you guys try this. Uh, yes, try please. Please. I don't have a helmet. Uh, did, did you submit this as like, part of your application to MIT? No, I did not. I did not. Oh, I'm gonna Actually, do though, the, the picture that you had, that was my last day in high school. And so I literally, I got out of English class to go teach another physics class about this. So much fun. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I didn't just get out of English class. My English class decided not to have English class, and they all came over, too. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, um, OK. Parents, okay, let's see how smart they are. I love to do this. And um, you're trying to learn, learn to ride a bike. How many people know how to ride a bike? Good. Most. Oh, okay, okay. I did not see a hand up. I just, I just saw this like, like this figure. I'm like, uh oh. I, no, no offense there. Okay. So, how many of you remember the first time you tried to ride a bike? Yeah. Um, a little bit. Okay. So, by the way, first of all, a unicycle is ten times harder than a bike to learn. Um, just to put things in perspective. Um, so you're trying to ride a bicycle. What advice did your parents give you, especially not besides braking? Most big parents forget to tell you about braking. It's a very important thing. Um, but, but what did they, like, maybe you're trying to, like, make a turn. What advice did they give you? Don't keep go. keep rolling. Don't keep fall. Go in keep keep, keep, uh, keep cycling. Keep pedaling. That's a, that's a very helpful thing. Yes, if you stop pedaling, that's your job. <laughs> my dad told telling me to lean in the opposite direction the bike was leaning. That 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 is smart kind of <laughs> advice. Oh yeah, and we'll get into why that doesn't work. Um, so if you're trying to make like a left turn, you also to if you're trying to make a left turn, turn don't make what did they tell you to do? They probably told you turn to the left. They probably told you lean to the left. Um, that's what the response I get from most middle schoolers and even high schoolers. That's what they said their parents said. And that would completely cause you to fall and that would not be pretty. In fact, I can actually show you that. Um, if you try to just make like um, immediately steer to the left, what actually happens? You fall. You fall. You fall. To, In to which right. direction? To the right. To the right. To the right. So you essentially land on the right side. So if I was going to go like this and then steer to the left, I would fall off to the right, and um, I did a really bad job of falling. Um, sorry, it wasn't so impressive. <laughs> I normally like to have at least one time when I fall and make it look legitimate. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so, so no, hold up. So you're basically saying that we didn't actually listen to our parents and did whatever we wanted to? Yes, I am saying that. I'm saying your parents okay. were wrong. Okay, because when <laughs> when they said you to turn to the right. left, you lean to the left, or steer to the left, that's actually not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to steer to the right. When you try to turn to the right, there's a frictional force that causes a torque on your body that rotates your body in the angle that you need to be. And then when you're at this position and you're leaning and your bicycle wheel is over here, then you can go and easily make this turn. So after you, what you want to do is you want to make a left turn. The first thing you have to do is you have to slightly steer to the right. It's a little counterintuitive. Does it make sense from a physics standpoint? Yes. Okay, this is so important for unicycling. You get a lot of people that they finally learn kind of how to use their arms to stay up, and they're doing well, and they're trying to learn to turn, and it's very, very hard for them to really understand how to make a quick, sharp turn. And that's very, very hard to do unless you, unless you really employ this. And I will say, by the way, all of you know how to do this in your brain. You might not think about it when you're riding a bicycle, but you, in fact, do this to some degree or another. Okay, so this is me trying to take a sharp no, left right. turn. I'm actually I'm not going to take a too sharp one guy. Um, so if I'm riding forward, I want to make a left turn. I sweep to the right, swerve to the right, and I very easily make this left turn. So all I'm doing is moving my point of contact. In fact, what I can do is if I do this correctly, I can make a very sharp turn, which is more exciting um, and more interesting. And if the floor were waxed, which it isn't, I would end up doing something called a spin. 
um, which I kind of mentioned before. So I'm going to try this again by really work hard. Then I really, really quickly rotate. In this case, I didn't really rotate so much as rotate that way, but I did, in fact, rotate backwards, which is pretty cool in and of itself. Okay, any questions? No. Kabish, Kabish. Okay, sharp turn on the, the unicycle, just showed you that. Okay, this is important for all of you whether or not you ride a unicycle. Motorcyclists, they have to counter steer. If you're riding next to a motorcyclist going down the highway, give them extra space because literally, for them to make, to make a left hand turn, they are going to literally swerve to the right before making that turn. It's very important because if they're up besides, beside another tractor trailer, they literally cannot turn to the left as fast as they need to. Very important. So if you're ever thinking of riding on the road and driving, it's very important. Okay. Cool? Cool. Cool. Okay. It's a little harder on the unicycle balance than what I've just mentioned though. And part of that is because not only can you fall like forwards and backwards and left and right, but well, you can fall in any of those directions in an entire any combination. So there's always this issue that if, you, if you're riding board and then you instantly slow down, well, no, no, what this is, is this is idling. So what I'm saying is I did, I did idling before, rocking back and forth. When I'm riding just normally, I'm actually speeding up and slowing down my wheel gradually. This is different than biking because I literally have to apply a, a force to go backwards. So I literally have to try to slow myself down in order to stay upright. So I'm constantly like going back and forth. And you can see that to a degree if I exaggerate it. Um, so if I kind of exaggerate it. Right slowly. Right slowly. So then I slow down, slow down, speed up, slow down, etc. And so I'm constantly doing that. Um, and I'm also constantly going back and forth left and right in order to, in order to keep keep myself as upright as I possibly can. Okay, so really quickly, review counter steering and then twisting your body. We haven't talked about this. So now let's talk about what your arms do. Okay, very quickly. Okay, let's see if you're, you're as good as the middle scores. And which of these examples would this force cause a torque about the axle? The middle one. The middle one, okay, okay, good, good, good. And the reason why is because there is a tangential component. So let's talk about a little bit about torque, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the unicycle really quickly. What is the diabolo? Diabolo. Oh. Diablo is that? Is this? This is fun. This is fun. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So, what is this? Oh, is it, it's one of those Chinese yo-yos. It is like a Chinese yo-yo, exactly. So you have two drumsticks, a string, and this really cool yo-yo that has a huge moment of inertia. And so your goal is to get it spinning. About what axis? Um, about, center. about the center axis. Okay. Because in normal yo-yos, they're very small. This is kind of heavy, and um, it's pretty cool. So what happens here is, is we get a torque due to the friction on the string. And my goal is to make the friction only go in one direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a very large force upwards when I'm pulling the string along. And then, then I very quickly relax the strings a little bit by like letting my arms down some, and then I will swing the, the string back. And so I can reset it for the next time. So what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up, I'm releasing it, and that way I keep a, a constant like torque going in one direction, and then I can just get it going a little faster. And in fact, um, if this isn't fast enough, because here I can only use the force of gravity, I can do something where I rotate it back and forth, and you can actually accelerate it even faster than you can using the conventional method I just showed you. So I'm not a professional like Diablo person, uh, but I bring this because it's pretty cool, and because this is something if you don't feel safe to unicycle, uh, you can try this uh, momentarily afterwards. So here we go for some tricks. Um, how many believe that a uh, Diablo can defy gravity? Okay, one person, one person. Okay, you guys ready? Oh, I know what you're going to do. Physics. Yeah, so I know what you're going to do. Okay, and I'm assuming you guys know how that's done. You wrap it around, and so the friction literally carries it up. It's just pretty cool. And you can also do other fun things oh like that. Oh, my God. I'm not ready to learn how to do this. <laughs> so, what did you learn how to do this? This was, this was a toy that I got, I think, I think that I got this when I came to MIT. This was like one of my graduation presents, uh, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that, that's the Diablo. That's Torque. Um, just to get your, your head thinking about Torque. 
Um, this is the interesting example, though, that I want to show you. So if you're riding around board and then you immediately stop, what happens? Or stop pedaling. You, yeah, you, you fall. And in fact, face you, you, you face plant. Because you just, yeah, you, you, you fall. And, and uh, so this is, this is the fun time when I get to like, do fall. my best job at acting of falling. Okay, uh, hold on. I want to I wanna, I wanna get this from a minute. Okay, from that perspective. Jonathan, don't scare me. Don't scare you? Okay, you don't have to watch this. <laughs> what? So okay. I think I'm going to do this. You're not going to get hurt okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, ready? I'm going to stop about right there. I can back up a little bit. I would. And I'm, I'm just going to stop battling, and I'm going to attempt to get my face as close to the ground without hurting myself. Okay, so here we go. I will okay. tag you to medical. Riding forward, stop battling. Oh, I'm okay. All right, so what happens, though, is that a friction of force forwards and backwards can significantly cause me to rotate forwards. Hi, Mario. It's nice to see you. I'll see you, I'll see you in Ice House later. It's all good. Thank you. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I might give a demonstration done later, so there'll be no. a chance. <laughs> so, really quickly, it's very important. Torque is very, very much a part of unicycling, and we have to think about it. So, now let's talk. We just mentioned that this frictional force that, that's between the ground and the wheel can cause a significant torque. It's also very important, this torque, in order to balance. Um, so, let's. Oh, you're standing up on the table. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, so because it's actually a really good angle to see. Okay, so give me one second. Um, where's my bag? Okay. Mr. Miyagi. Well, I'm sorry, I'm like a stick figure. It's like yeah. Mr. Miyagi. It's like rising sun in the background. Thing. Okay, give me one second. I am partially ill, and unfortunately, I could not go to give blood um, because I don't think that any sick person. Uh, would really want my blood after I've been slightly um, and, uh, sick. Like, why didn't you uh, because the issue was not getting enough sleep. Oh. But that's why they made hand sanitizer. <laughs> uh, okay, so balancing using your arms. Okay, I'm sure all of you have tried balancing with your arms. I'm sure you all like say obviously arms help you, but let's let's go into why. Okay, so you're on a balance beam. Okay, uh, volunteer. Somebody who's willing to modestly risk their life for, for, for the rest of... I, I, I can risk my life for physics, but I'm not really risking in my life for physics, so... Anybody? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Alright, so yeah, normally I would go on at... Oh, I could actually... Uh, no. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> okay, okay, so you're going to balance on this little miniature balance beam, right? Okay, so face that way. And you'll probably have to do it like one foot. Okay, so you notice that... He is using his arms to help him bounce, and he just spread out the bounce beam to make it easier for him. <laughs> but that's all good, that's all good. And, and so, he can use his arms. So, let's, let's predict. So if he takes his arms and he twists this way, which way is he gonna go? Opposite. He's gonna go that way, okay. So twist your arms that way. Try it again, go to you. Without moving, without moving your so, body. So start, start up here, start with your left hand up in the air. Okay. Other left. <laughs> <laughs> and then rotate really really fast that way. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I think I'm putting too much force into this one. So you're, you're sort of like predicting which way you're going to go by like making it so you're almost going to lean, um, lean to the left. So be like perfectly upright um, and yeah, have that quite narrow. Good, good, good. And actually you, you can help, you can help a little bit if you also like twist, twist your hips a little bit to the right direction. Okay, so ready? Go. Okay, okay, so he did, he did. Yeah. Okay, so he went in the right in the right direction, um, and, and so what happened was that when he twists his arms, he falls this way. If he went to twist his arms the other way, he would, let me try not to fall momentarily, if he twists his arms the other way, he would definitely fall in this direction. And so what's happening, what's happening here, is that when he goes to twist his arms, oh my God, his feet that's want to twist in the other direction, and I can, I can, I can, Pretend, do some cheerleading skills. Uh, uh, cheerleader skills? No, I'm not a cheerleader. Um, and, and, and I'm going to hit the ceiling for sure on this. What? Unfortunately. <laughs> um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up. I'm going to take my arm. I'm going to twist this way. I want you to watch what happened to my feet. What do you think is going to happen to my feet when yeah, I twist my arms this way? It's going to go back. It's going to spin out. Okay, so. What? Watch the pipes. Yeah, watch the pipes. Watch the pipes. I'm more concerned about my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Why did you take my head off? 
Because then I would definitely hit the pipes. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, you guys ready? So if I twist, what happens? When I twist my body, my upper body one way, my lower body, my conservation angle momentum, swings out the other way. So what's happening is when you twist your arms, your feet try to go out, but they can't. And the reason why they can't is because your feet are fit, uh, like essentially fixed to the ground due to friction. And friction puts a force this way. And so what is the net force on this person? Net force is this way. So which way are they going to go? They're going to accelerate over. And so now they're about to fall over. So what should they do? Twist the other, yeah. twist the other way. So they can counter steer and sort of correct themselves, swap the other way, and sure enough, there'll be a force that pushes them back, and they can come up back upright. So what I was doing when I was stalling, um, to whatever degree I could, I wasn't too good at it, but you notice I was moving my arms a lot, and I was constantly trying to move my point of center of mass right over this position and stay upright. So that, that is the idea of, of what your arms do. Okay, quick question. Why does it help somebody who's bouncing, like on a tight rope, for example, have this giant beam with weights at the end? In terms of physics. Um, because it's like, it's, it's more force and like less movement of your body. Okay, okay. Um, it increases your upper body's moment of inertia. Exactly. So, very, very good. By having this beam, you have essentially longer arms, so you only have to move this beam a little bit, and you have to apply from a force of friction a huge torque um, to sort of keep your feet still. Um, and so that is essentially why, like you're increasing your moment of inertia, and so that is why, like balancers will also awful and have this giant beam with weights on the end. It is virtually cheating, um, and in all senses, uh, <laughs> in one sense. Okay. Two methods of balance. We talked about counter steering, we got, talked about twisting your body. This counter steering largely dealt with just translation in the sense that you, translation at least of your point of contact. Um, this largely dealt with rotation and torque. Both of them in one sense um, do deal with translation and rotation, um, but you can, you can sort of think of them as sort of their own separate worlds. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so we talked about angular momentum. Um, I'm afraid that the floor here is not this beautiful wax gymnasium. Um, if you catch me at another time, I can do this where literally I start spinning and I keep on spinning, which is pretty awesomely cool until I like fall over and then hopefully, hopefully I dismount. Um, so angle momentum applies to you in a second. Um, let's talk about the helmet. Um, we haven't talked about it too much except they said that it's important. What good does the helmet do? It it, 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 the time over the weight of the horse is acting and there's an impulse on your head. Very good, very good. So if I'm riding forward on my unicycle and then I run into a wall. <laughs> okay. You know, maybe I just was not too good. I, I failed to dismount at this point. Okay. And, and if you grab to the wall. Okay. So originally I have momentum P. And then here, my momentum, like this is PI, and, and then PF equals C1. <laughs> okay. and, and so we know momentum, a change in momentum equals force times time. And so if we had force, um, a magnitude, and then we had time, like delta T, we could have two cases. We could have the case in which you're wearing a helmet, of which you get a fair amount of time, or you could have the case in which you're not wearing a helmet, in which it would be about here, and so your force would be somewhere up there. <laughs> and that is why helmets are very, very important, and you should definitely wear a helmet if you're trying anything so ludicrous as, as what I was trying to do today. Peace. Okay, 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 cool. Um, so let's talk about some more advanced topics. Um, okay, for the YouTube video now? What? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So, really quickly though, um, before I keep on going, I have some other cool, more in-depth physics topics. What I really wanted to talk about though was like the balance and the two ways of balancing. Are there other questions you guys have or things that you want to see um, in addition to YouTube? Anything? Okay, okay, okay. So, often on stage, just as a cool thing, um, you see people performing on a draft. And they're doing that thing called idling where they're going back and forth. 
and I would argue that it's actually harder to idle on a unicycle. And the reason why is because if you look at these diagrams, the position of the seat goes up and down a whole lot more in this case than if you have in this case. And in addition, the, the, the gravitational force applied from you has a significantly less torque when you're all the way up here because the angle is just so minimal. Um, and, and the moment arm is technically less. Um, so what's cool here is that it's actually easier to balance on top of a, unis a giraffe. It's a little hard under harder to land. Um, but besides that, besides that, why you see people performing on these giraffes is not only are they impressive, they're significantly easier. They're significantly easier. So um, that is one cool thing that I, I, you can talk about. Um, and the reason why you, in fact, it, it takes work to go up and down. <laughs> but in terms of you pedaling backwards and forwards, you're applying, you're adding this energy to your body um, in terms of potential energy. Um, so just this change in potential energy, you can see that uh, riding a little unicycle is a lot harder than riding a giraffe. Okay. Um, there's a couple other things um, that I can talk about. This starts to get a little bit more complicated. Um, one thing I wanted to mention um, or show you was turning without using my arms. Um, turning without my using my arms is grossly funny to watch. Um, oh my god, Jonathan <laughs> can ride a bike with no handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's but, basically uh, a unicycle, right? Exactly. I mean, I I mean if, you, if you told somebody, you know, I can ride a, my, my unicycle without hands, um, they might not be as impressed as if you said I can ride a bike with no hands, because I think maybe they don't understand hands are vital to unicycling. But I can also do something in which I sort of like keep my hands behind my back so you know that I don't get this. Okay, okay. So I, I, I did survive the last bit. Um, <laughs> and so now what we're talking about is we're talking about how you can balance on a, a like, and ride a bicycle without, no, with, um, without hands and how that works. And so what we have here is this wheel is technically, if you looked at it this way, it's kind of the shape you know, it's kind of rounded, you know, and, it, and, and technically, from one perspective, it's like a gravitational potential well. And, and in this respect, if I try to just hold my unicycle, just one finger right here, you notice it doesn't roll over. In fact, you could you could even you could calculate the angular frequency at which it rotates if you were <laughs> really 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 wanted to. Um, but what's happening here? is that when you rotate your unicycle, it actually shifts the position of this, of, of part of your wheel upwards. And you can see it, this is the same exact picture. I've, I've shrunk it and adjusted it so that you know that the, the wheel touches here and the seat touches right here. But you notice that when it turns and it's rotated, this position is actually higher than this one. This is a very small bit, but it's very, very important because it means that as you saw when I was when I was in this lovely like going around in a circle, it's very hard for me to get out of that circle because I actually have to add energy to the system to lift myself back up. I am in literally a potential well. Do you mind if I stay here? Yeah, you can stay here. I, I hope it doesn't bother me setting. Um, but yeah, so so this is a really important thing because it helps you to turn as soon as you start. If you start leaning in a direction. Your, 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 the, the fact that there's a gravitational potential well will mean that you are automatically going to rotate inwards. So if you speed up, you're going to rotate inwards. So as you're going around, it means that your, your unicycle naturally will want to, want to rotate and so that you are nearest to the ground. And this is very crucial for being able to turn on a unicycle and um, ride it back with no hands. So I don't recommend this. Um, I, I do not, in fact, it's actually kind of illegal. Um, right. At least in the state of Delaware, you actually have to, by law, have one hand on the handlebars. Um, what if you're an amputee? What? What if you're an amputee? You probably shouldn't be right. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like America has lots of like stupid laws, but keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, the real question is, if you're holding on to one, hand, uh, like, one bar with your hand, how can you signal legally? with your other hand to like signal right, left, and stop. That, that's, okay, so never mind. Okay, so... <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, um, bicycle, same concept. When you rotate your wheel, 
you know, this is exact same picture, exact same picture, but I've rotated this and shifted it so that the wheels are level, and you notice that the center mass of the bicycle goes down. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dave. Hello. If I'm disturbing things, you can shut no, the door, but like thank you for coming and seeing us. Okay, so rotating the wheel actually makes your center mass go down. And you know this because if you've ever, like, um, stood on top of, like, got on top of your bicycle and not pedaled, sometimes your wheel will want to, like, rotate. It's really annoying. Okay, but it's actually a very important thing um, be because essentially it means that riding your, your bike normally is an unstable equilibrium in the sense that your wheel automatically wants to turn to one side or another so you can be lower. Okay. It's going to run out of battery. <laughs> okay. Which is sad. It's, a, it's all good if it does. It, it's, a, it's all good. So. At least we know you survived. <laughs> that's important. So, here it's very much unstable, okay, in most cases. But what we have is when you're riding forwards, you have a force of friction that acts as a restoring force. And so by going forward, even though gravity is causing a torque on this wheel um, that, that makes it so it wants to rotate inwards, you have a restoring force of gravity that's preventing it from just completely falling over. And so that is essentially how you can keep your wheel upright. Now the cool thing though, is that the more you lean to one side, the more gravity has an opportunity to act